Hey, what's up? It's Nicola Milan. Let's talk about finding your singing style. Now, when you first start out as a singer, this is something that uh, you kind of want. You're like, oh, what style suits me? Or how do I develop my own uniqueness that's different to all the other singers out there? Uh, the truth is, it's a little bit of a journey. However, I do have three steps for you, kind of milestones, I suppose, that you can kind of work towards within this journey to developing your own style. And the reason it's a journey is because your skills will improve over time. So what you can sing now when you're first starting out will be completely different to what your vocal range can access and the different notes that you can hit and you'll have more power and things like that later on. And so it will definitely influence the, the types of singing that are accessible to you and therefore it will mould your style, which is why it's a journey because you've kind of got to go with what your skills can do and where you're at at the point in time. So the first step to your journey would be to listen to heaps of music. I mean, I, I actually started out in classical uh, and the reason for it was because this is what they taught in school. We, they didn't talk, teach jazz at the time, it was all classical. And so I got classical, classical drilled into me. My singing style was very classical when I first started. I was very plucky, I was like two, you know, it's, yeah, it took, it took me quite a while to kind of take the classical out of my voice when I kind of eventually moved into jazz. And then uh, I, and we're talking quite little here, we're talking it starts off in primary school, right? Um, yeah. And then my dad used to listen to a lot of musical theatre. He was a huge Andrew Lloyd Webber fan. And so I was influenced by that, obviously. And then I moved into musical theatre. And then I sang in a heavy rock band in university. I know, and it sucked. It was awful and it felt really uncomfortable and it just <laughs> kind of wasn't the experience that, that told me, no, this is not the right genre for you. Um, and then it wasn't really until I auditioned for the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts and I wanted to get into a course for musical theatre. So I actually auditioned for musical theatre and they didn't let me in and they said, look, we actually think your voice is probably more suited to jazz. Have you thought about that? And then I was like, oh. And at that point in time, I was really late to jazz. I hadn't been exposed to much of it because you kind of, um, I guess you kind of get influenced by what your friends are listening to, what's on the radio, what your parents listen to, what the school, your school kind of puts you into and all this sort of stuff. And jazz hadn't been part of that realm. Uh, and so when I finally started listening to jazz and started off with Natalie Cole, ah, uh, I just, something clicked and I kind of felt like I, I came home, you know what I mean? But it really kind of wasn't, um, you know, I didn't find that until I'd gone through all these other genres, like, genres, like I'd listened to so much other music by that point that when I finally found jazz, I kind of knew, it's like, oh, it's like the sun came down on me and I kind of, yeah, just felt like coming home. So that is the first step to your journey, is to go and listen to a shitload of music. Go and listen to everything and try singing everything because you don't know what's out there or what your voice suits until you've tried quite a few different things. Now the second step of your journey is you'll get to this point where, like I did, I found jazz, but I obviously loved Aretha Franklin. I mean, who wouldn't? She's a phenomenal singing talent. She's got this insanely powerful voice with um, like acute control over her voice and she can sing everything. And I mean, you know, I think it was at the time when songs like Respect and things like that were on the radio. But uh, even though, I mean, she's kind of known for the song Respect, if you listen to like Aretha Sings the Blues, some of her albums there, man, she, oh, she tingles you with the soft, delicate magic that this woman produces with her voice. So obviously I wanted to sing like Aretha, but I had very much, at that point in time, a Nora Jones type voice. Huge difference. So I just wasn't sounding good singing Aretha. It was this pipe dream. But what I did do is I found other artists similar to Nora Jones that I sounded like. So it was like, um, at the time, Eva Cassidy, um, Diana Corral was around, some of the old school jazz singers like um, Julie London really suited, I just really suited her style, Ella Fitzgerald, The Queen, um, and those sorts of sort of more 
uh, I suppose, yeah, um, sultry jazz singers that I could sing similar to. What I did is I actually copied a lot of them. So when I say copy, what I mean is you, you go and listen to them and you sing the song exactly as they sing it. So I was listening to their phrasing, you know, whether they held their notes right to the end of the phrase and then took a breath or if they cut them short. I would listen to how they would sing the dynamics of the song, so the rise and the fall and the volume, and, and like the vibrato and the improvisation, all these different aspects. I, try, I absorbed like a little sponge. And so within that kind of area of singers that I could sing like, I started to become not just like one of them, but like a few of the different ones. And so I kind of developed my style within that area. Now this brings us to stage three of your singing journey to finding your unique style because what happens is after a while your skills will develop and so after a while i've been working really hard on my belt voice and those notes became more available to me i was able to sing them with more power a lot more clear my range had extended at that point my uh, command over improvisation and understanding of music had grown and so uh, before I had, I had this kind of like, you know, had the Ella Fitzgeralds and the Nora Joneses and then in the jazz genre, then kind of left of what I was able to do were other artists like Diana Washington, Edda James, oh, insane, um, Carmen McRae and these ladies sang very different to me. If you listen to their phrasing and the way that they sing things, it's, um, I mean, they obviously they belt like Carmen McRae is very speech level, they would cut their phrases a lot shorter so their phrasing was very different to mine but now that my skills had grown I was now able to access these ladies and kind of do what they were doing and so what happens is I now had like a bit of a combination going between you know the softer stuff and the harsher sort of stuff and then I kind of melded them in together because I was listening to so many and practicing so many different artists that I then had a bit of a different style. So I was de this is how I was developing my own singing style, basically by copying and listening from a whole variety of different artists. And this is kind of what happens like in any artistic field. If you're an artist, like a draw, like I'm an illustrator as well. It took me years to develop my own style, and I did that by trying to draw like one particular artist and then another one and then another one and after a while I kind of developed my own style but it took it took a while to get there um you know and now I, I can sing some Aretha stuff I mean to be perfectly honest I'm never going to sing like as well as Aretha sings Aretha because I don't have that kind of voice uh but I can sing my own version really really well and I don't actually want to sing like Aretha now because I sound like me uh, and then what happened is that I had a third kind of arm um, to my kind of overall sound. I listened to a lot of, I love trip hop. I've always loved like Massive Attack and Porter's Head and stuff like that. But, um, and also because I'm a songwriter, um, I was quite heavily influenced by that type of music within my songwriting. And I love this band called Bitter Sweet. They're no longer around. They're like a New York jazz duo, a producer and a singer, and they kind of do trip hop infused jazz. And so I love those, those kinds of sounds and some of the more electronic jazz fusion stuff that was coming out of Europe. And so then I had like that added on to the two kind of jazz styles. And then it's really kind of created the unique singing style that I have today. So yeah, see how it's, do you see what I mean by how it's a journey? And those are basically the three steps that you kind of need to go through to find your unique singing style. So I hope that's given you a little bit of insight into the process so you can go out and have fun with it. You get to go and listen to a whole heap of music and go and sing to whoever you want. Oh, fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up because it helps. It does help the channel. And subscribe if you would like more videos like this. Uh, I've got some free vocal warm-ups for you if you would like those. I will link to them below. They're on nicolamalan.com forward slash tutorials and you can grab them there. Thanks again for watching. I will see you again soon.